This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1037, Setting Posteriorities, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year to help you optimize your life. Today's post is from Steve Pavlina, another author that I've been narrating from the beginning. My first episode featuring him was episode three, if you can believe it. Before we get to his post, I wanted to recommend Simple Life Nutrition. They're a company that provides organic, vegan, Moringa oleifera products, which are super nutritious. Visit simplelifenutrition.com to learn more about the benefits. And Optimal Living Daily listeners get 15% off their first order. That's with the code OLD15. Again, that's simplelifenutrition.com and the code OLD15. Now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Setting Posteriorities by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. You're probably familiar with the idea of setting priorities. You look at your list of goals or projects or tasks and sort them in order of most important to least important. Then you focus your attention on the most important ones before you tackle the less important ones. Nothing too surprising there. But let's say you have a new priority come into your life and it's one that requires a non-trivial time investment. Maybe you want to start an exercise program and you want to devote a few hours a week to it. You don't feel like you have any free time where you can just insert your exercise routine. The whole idea of free time is a bit silly anyway. You're always using time for something, even if it's purely for leisure activities or rest. So the only way you can insert something new into your life is to delete something old. You're already filling each 24-hour day with 24 hours of habitual actions, whether this be sleep, or work, or rest, or even just being lazy. You can't just stuff an extra hour in there and create a 25-hour day. Well, I suppose you could if you have a very flexible schedule, but then you'll lose about two weeks at the end of the year. A problem happens when you try to do this 25 hours into 24 hours shove. That hour will have to be stolen from somewhere else. Most of the time, people don't choose where this hour will actually come from. They may assign it a time, but they won't consciously think about what's going to be displaced from that time slot. This can result in feeling stressed or overwhelmed for no apparent reason, which often leads to procrastination. Maybe the displaced activities were more important than you realized. The idea of setting posteriorities means that you consciously and deliberately choose what to delete whenever you start doing something new. So if you wanna add 30 minutes of exercise to each day, where will this 30 minutes come from? Will it be stolen from sleep time, family time, lazy time, fun time, thinking and reflecting time, etc.? Ideally, whenever you add a new priority to your life, you want to delete a posteriority. Just as you make a list of what's most important to you in life, you can also make a list of what's least important to you. Take note of what you do each day that just isn't that important. Where can you steal time from unimportant activities to be reassigned to more important ones? Can you delete watching some TV to add some extra reading? Can you delete superfluous web surfing to add more thinking time? Sometimes setting posteriorities is very challenging. Once you've achieved a nicely balanced life and then you wanna start a big new project, you may find it difficult to steal time from other activities because now everything seems important. I had this problem when I started writing my book. This is a big project and I'm presently investing about 40 hours a week on it. That's 40 hours I have to displace every week in order to complete this project, a huge amount of time. In the beginning, I naively just try to squeeze it into my already busy schedule without consciously deciding what 40 hours I would delete. I dropped maybe 10 hours consciously, so I was trying to squeeze 70 hours of activity into those 40 hours. Obviously, that didn't work too well. I had to consciously pick out another 30 hours to drop, and that required making some hard sacrifices. Some of it came from sleep, some from family time, but most of it came from other work activities. I had to start passing up a lot of business opportunities that I would normally have taken advantage of. I had to start saying no a lot more often. Now, virtually every week, I have to say no to at least two or three tempting business offers. In the short run, most would be successful, but in the long run, I'd never finish my book if I said yes too many times. And ultimately, the book project is much more important than the sum total of all these smaller projects, as tempting as they seem. It could take a bit of careful reflection to know what's important to you and what isn't. For example, 
Suppose you're currently working a full-time job and decide to start your own business. Many people will try to do this by starting their business in their <clears throat> spare time while keeping their full-time job. And it certainly works for some people. Spare time doesn't really exist though, so what's being displaced? Often it's family time, leisure time, or exercise time. So if you work on your new business an extra two hours a day, you've not only increased your total work time by two hours, but you've also reduced your recovery time by two hours. And this often throws life out of balance and can lead to physical and emotional overwhelm. I confess to being rather intimately familiar with this situation at times. An alternative way of handling this situation is to steal that extra time for your new business from your existing work time. Depending on what options are available to you, you may be able to scale back your hours, switch to a part-time job, quit completely and work on your new business full-time, use accrued vacation time and sick days to take off one day each week, steal small blocks of time during your regular workday for your new business, etc. Obviously, some of these options will displace some income, but for many people, that is a better choice than displacing too much leisure time. You just listened to the post titled Setting Posteriorities by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. It's crazy to think that I narrated Steve in episode three and a thousand episodes later still going. He has a lot of articles and I probably narrated like a hundred of them. I work a lot and nutrition is something I often overlook. Definitely need to set my posteriorities. And Simple Life Nutrition is a company that provides organic and vegan Moringa oleifera products. Moringa is known as the miracle tree. It's been featured by the New York Times, the Huffington Post, Dr. Oz, and more because it's extremely nutritious with over two dozen vitamins and minerals, all nine essential amino acids, and over 40 known antioxidant compounds. I've been drinking the tea, but they have different products. I am enjoying the tea. They have lemon, pomegranate, and original flavors. They all taste great. So come try it out. Visit simplelifenutrition.com to learn more about how Moringa can benefit your nutritional needs and support your overall wellness. Optimal Living Daily listeners get 15% off their first order with the code OLD15, plus a dollar for every sale with that code will be donated to Feed the Children. That's a nonprofit helping feed malnourished children. I'm really happy they did that for us. Again, that's simplelifenutrition.com and the code OLD15. But I'll do it for the Saturday episode. I hope you're having a great weekend and I'll be back tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.